Stability AI has just announced their new image to video model. This is Stable Video Diffusion or SVD. Now, what is incredible about this is not only is it available in their developer platform, it's also available in their API. Can I get a huge thank you to Stability? Uh, something that is kind of my pet peeve is when these uh, companies make a big AI announcement. Number one, if it's not available, they're like, and this is coming soon in like, I don't know, a certain amount of time. That's kind of annoying. But even more annoying is when it's like, here's a cool feature, but it's only for like individual users. There's no API access, aka you can't build this into any apps or platforms that you're creating, which just kind of slows down the whole growth of it. So this is something I'm super excited about on the podcast today. I'll be breaking down all of the advancements, all of the announcements, all of the features and everything they're doing. Um, there's some really interesting and exciting stuff in what I believe is really the next frontier, which is AI generated video. So let's get into the podcast. We gonna bring it to you just like that. Welcome everyone to the future. It's AI chat, bringing you the interviews and giving you info to be in the know. Tech company CEOs of Rock with us. Bet you gonna come back. Come I'm back. just saying the facts. This is AI chat. Let's go. SVD now allows third party developers to integrate advanced video generation into their apps, websites, software, and services. This is all thanks to essentially Stability AI's big new announcement today that they're going to be releasing the API and have API access on their developer platform for their new stable video diffusion. So, Stability AI is really trying to provide an effective way for developers to incorporate video generation into their products. Um, this is something I really appreciate. I'm excited. Uh, to see a lot of, you know, a lot of these AI video generated projects come out. And the thing that gets me excited is that these can actually be used for something useful and productive beyond just uh, users using them for kind of single use stuff. Um, because once you have the API, now this is getting built into tools and it just goes so much further and gets added into the automations that actually enable a lot of the efficiencies that AI has. So this all doesn't go without a little bit of controversy. Stability AI has faced a bunch of criticism for training its models on the LAION 5B dataset. So what's really tricky here is essentially, well, I guess the controversy first is that this dataset contains instances of child abuse material. Um, and the whole dataset was actually recently taken offline because of that. What's really tricky here is when you have these massive data sets that were scraped from the open internet, um, it's hard to identify some of those um, issues. Now, of course, you could say uh, you, you could write a software or an AI that goes through and kind of automatically sorts all of the images and pulls these um, these issues out because otherwise, right, when you just scrape the entire internet, you don't know what you're going to get. It, it is very tricky. And so um, they definitely are facing a lot of criticism here. And the part that's probably hard for them is, you know, they've obviously trained this model and spent millions, maybe tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars for some, you know, in some cases, um, training this new model. And when they find out, oh, shoot, you know, there was bad content in the data set. Um, this makes, you know, it's, it is obviously a very tricky situation because they spend a lot of money, but like, obviously they have a serious issue. So, um, Right now, they're dealing with all of that, and they have still gone ahead and released it, so there's a lot of controversy around that. So SVD um, and their API plugin has, uh, here's the features that are coming with it. Essentially, they have two second, uh, like a two-second video, so that's 25 generated frames and 24 frames of film interoper interpolation, um, and that has an average time of 41 seconds. So really what's happening is... Um, you're getting it to generate not super long videos, um, but really it's just generating a bunch of images that it streams together to make a video, right? That's how video is created. It's just a bunch of images strung together. So it's kind of interesting the way they're doing that. Um, this new SVD is really useful in producing GIFs, right? Um, with specific messaging, including like memes is what a lot of people are saying this is going to be used for. And I think that right now it competes with, and it's really similar to like what you'd see out of Runway or Pika Labs. Um, now, if I'm being 100% honest, I've been much more impressed by the demo from Pico Labs and Runway, but also that was just a demo and you can very easily cherry pick impressive demo stuff. Um, so I'll be curious to see, I don't know, it, allegedly they're competing with like Pico Labs, but Pico Labs has a ton of incredible features. Like you can select the t-shirt on someone and say, change the color of this, or like there, there's a lot of really impressive customizations that Pico Labs is doing um, that I don't know if, you know, these are doing... I kind of get the feeling this this new thing from Stability AI is kind of like Runway where you just put a text and a prompt and it, it generates a basic video, but it's not super customizable, doesn't have a lot of editing features or tools. 
But with all of that being said, where I will give Stability AI some credit is the fact that um, Pika Labs and Runway, neither of them have um, their models available through API. It's just, you know, you can go on the website or apps essentially um, to access them. So anytime there's API access, I give major kudos to the company. And of course, that's why I think where OpenAI is really winning right now because with their they have really robust APIs um, and that's ensuring that OpenAI's tools are getting integrated into everything when, you know, you have, for example, MidJourney that's better than Dolly 3 at image generation, but Dolly 3 is going to get integrated into way more just because um, they have an API access. It's easy for developers to put this into stuff. So AP, I think don't um, underestimate the power of including APIs into these AI tools and the adoption that comes because of that. So Runway and Pika Labs models are... Um, Obviously going to have to work on that. We'll see when that actually happens. But in any case, Stability AI plans to launch a user-facing web experience for this new video generation. Um, they have a wait list available for early access. So again, it's kind of along the lines of one of my pet peeves, which is they make the announcement, but it's not available. I just wish, I really liked it when OpenAI announced their GPT store. And I guess even that wasn't fully like ready, but they announced it and you could immediately go on and like kind of play around with it and make a couple basic GPTs. And like, there's way more features and payments and the store and all that that's coming. But like, you kind of use the tool right away. That is what I really like to see. But I know they, uh, you know, everyone likes to get the hyper, the hype early to raise more money, to increase their valuation and get more people like using the platform because they see where it's going. So they seem like they're catching up to their competitors, whatever. I get it. It's a highly competitive space, but Still, you know, just just kind of minorly annoying. So um, stable video diffusion, what it's doing, it's actually just generating MP4 videos. Um, and it can also do this from still images. So you could put a JPEG or a PNG in there. Um, and it's, of course, and it's able to essentially turn that into a video like we've seen from a couple other tools like DID is doing that as well, famously. Um, what I will say is what they're doing right now, it is limited to short clips. So it's like, you know, two seconds long. Um, but... Um, SVD can be used for like they have a lot of uses uh, that uh, that are allowed in their terms so advertising marketing TV film gaming like all of that you're, you're allowed to use your outputs um, commercially which is really exciting so they also have a bunch of different resolutions portrait landscape um, and they have things like motion strength control and seed based control for repeatable or random generation so with all that being said I think Stability AI right now is really continuing to kind of expand a lot of what they're doing. Um, this is despite, of course, all the controversies related to their training data. Um, and of course, you know, I talked about some controversies early, but there's also other ones. Um, for example, there is a class action lawsuit, which uh, they're, they're pretty much alleging that there's unauthorized use of copyrighted images um, when they were training. And I mean, that's the same thing that OpenAI and everyone has to deal with unless you have your own data set. It seems like Adobe pretty much dodged this bullet by using their, like, essentially getting the licensing and using their own iStock data set um, to, you know, they're like, hey, we have the rights to to use all of these images. People can opt out if they want. And also they pay, like, royalties and fees to, like, image creators. So there's some cool stuff that Adobe's doing, and I got to give them props to that. And the rest of them are just going to have to do lawsuits to to move forward because they, you know, they don't have that or they can't get the licensing. I'm not sure what the, the main issue is. Probably just that they can't get such a huge data set. Um, in any case, Stability AI right now has a membership for customers to host models locally, but I'm really excited about where this is going. Um, I'm excited that they're making the API, that they've kind of made that announcement when others haven't. So I'll keep you up to date on where this is getting implemented next. Um, who's using this and what some of the exciting use cases are as they come down the pipe. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below.